And I offer the call to the member for Jurak. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on the Social Services Legislation Amendment Bill 2015, and I'm pleased to participate in this debate. Deputy Speaker, in essence, the proposed measures will cease social security payments to people who have been charged with a serious offence and are confined to a psychiatric institution due to mental impairment and have not yet been convicted or have been deemed not fit to stand trial. For these members of the community to receive payment from the government is not a valuable use of taxpayers' money. The amendments define a serious offence such as murder, attempted murder, manslaughter, rape or attempted rape and other violent offences that are punishable by imprisonment of life or for a period of at least seven years. Deputy Speaker, I find no reason or justification to explain why these people should receive social service payments. Now, Deputy Speaker, I'm not uncaring, but this is welfare. And such taxpayer-funded payments are intended to cover the cost of living. Already, these particular individuals are being cared for by the government in the psychiatric institution whilst they await trial or because they are unfit for trial. And I say unequivocally that I don't believe this is right and should not be continued. Deputy Speaker, I think there is value in reflecting on the background of this issue. If we look back over the years, between 1986 and 2002, people who were charged with a serious offence were determined to be ineligible for social service payments whilst they were in psychiatric confinement. And this was as a consequence of their criminal charges. However, in 2002, mm -hmm. the federal court decision determined that most people confined in a psychiatric institution would be undertaking some form of rehabilitation. And because of that fact, they were enrolled in a rehabilitation course. They then became eligible for social security payments. And in general terms, that will continue to stand. Deputy Speaker, I wish to be clear about the measures we are talking about here today. They will only impact a small number of people in such circumstances and only to those who have been charged with the most serious offence, such as rape, murder and other violent crimes. And it's noteworthy that at the same time it is, it is expected that the bill will produce a savings of over $30 million over the forward estimates. Money that I believe that can be better spent on those Australians who need it, rather on those charged, and I do underline the word charged, with serious and violent crimes, and who are also already being cared for by the government. It is my view that the funding has been unwisely given in the past, albeit as a consequence of a court case, to these allegedly violent criminals, and that we should cease social security payments to this group as soon as possible. As a society and as a government, we should not be providing social security payments to people charged with violent and serious offences and confined to a psychiatric institution at the grace of the government. The amendments contained in this bill simply represent a return to the original or pre-2002 policy intent for people who have been charged with a serious offence. The intent was, and is straightforward, that a person cannot access social security payments whilst in psychiatric confinement as a result of criminal charges. It's worth bearing in mind, Deputy Speaker, that people who are imprisoned and in psychiatric confinement are provided with accommodation, food and all their essentials by the state or the territory. After being charged with an offence, a person becomes the responsibility of the state or territory government, which is then the responsible, responsible entity for taking care of the individual's needs, including funding for their treatment and rehabilitation. I understand that some state or territory governments are currently using people's income support to help fund their confinement. For example, the Queensland government takes up to 85 per cent of a person's pension whilst they're in psychiatric confinement, whereas the Victorian forensic confinement centres can charge up to 85 per cent as well of a person's income support payment.
whereas Deputy Speaker people confined in prison convicted of a criminal offence or who are on remand are not eligible for social security payments. Deputy Speaker, the measures in this bill will even out the playing field, and as they rightly should, but let's keep in mind it's not intended to punish people or negatively impact their rehabilitation, especially as the people we are referring to have only been charged, and once again I underline that word, with an offence they have not been convicted. It is estimated that this measure will affect approximately 350 people on implementation and 50 people per year following a small number, uh, which, as I said, will save the government approximately 30 million over the forward estimates. However, people do need social security payments to help them transition back to the community, which of course is only fair and reasonable, and that is why there are provisions in the bill that provide for social security payments for a person who, who is not taken to be undergoing psychiatric confinement. This means that a social security payment will be payable during a period of integration back into the community, and there is no argument with me on that point. Deputy Speaker, before closing, it is important to repeat that this measure takes effect as a consequence of serious crime only, as I've said, and a social security payment will continue to be paid where a person is undergoing psychiatric confinement because they've been charged with a non-serious offence as long as they are undertaking a course of rehabilitation, or a person is undergoing psychiatric confinement for, for reasons unrelated to an event. This measure will only apply to people who have been charged with a serious offence that is punishable by imprisonment for life or for a period of at least seven years and are held in psychiatric confinement due to their inability to plead or having been found not guilty by reason of mental impairment. And it's worth noting that there, there are provisions for social security payments to be made if these particular individuals are undertaking a course of rehabilitation. I commend this bill to the House.